Hello and welcome to All Saints by the Seas virtual Sunday service for Sunday, July 12th. I'm Amy Iyer Delavet, the rector at All Saints by the Sea, and I'm here with my family. Wonderful to be with uh, you all coming from our living room to your living room. If you haven't had an opportunity to do so yet, I invite you to download your bulletin on a separate device or print it out so that you can worship along together today. I also want to direct your attention to the announcements on the final page of the bulletin. You'll find some ministry notes there about ongoing Christian formation opportunities, about ways to get in touch with somebody for pastoral care or outreach assistance, about our ongoing weekly Zoom ministries, and also an invitation to support All Saints by the Sea with your financial contributions so that we can keep all of this ministry going uh, through this COVID-19 moment and well, well beyond. Thank you for the many ways that you support the ministry of All Saints by the Sea. If you have an opportunity to get a candle and put it in your worship space, I invite you to do so now and light it as a way of marking our time and space in worship together. Let us pray. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, 
the Aramean of Padanaram, sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled within her, and she said, if it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. So they named him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Let us say together that portion of Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly they are a joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, 
that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. If you walk into my home, your immediate reaction might be, oh, wow, flowers. There are blooming orchids and other plants, books on great gardens or flowers, artwork that captures the same, and even household items with floral <coughs> motif. You might even think that I <coughs> know what I'm doing when it comes to flowers. Well, that would be so sweet of you, but laugh out loud. My real passion is looking at flowers. You have no idea how relieved I was to give up a garden when I moved into a townhouse. My black thumb was much easier to cover up with container gardening. Kill a plant, head to the nearest nursery, and buy another. Plant a seed, not on your life. I knew I could actually kill something off before it had a chance to take root. In light of our gospel reading this morning, I would like to think that my gardening skills have nothing in common with my ministry skills, and I hope Jesus feels the same way. Our reading from Matthew is based on a parable that Jesus delivered from a boat after the gathering crowd on the beach became too loud, <coughs> too large. The parable <coughs> regarded the effort effect and the outcome of sowing seed, figuratively and metaphorically. In Jesus' time, farmers cast seed onto plowed field and then dragged branches across the field to cover the seed. The seed was at the mercy of the randomness of this technique, as well as many acts of nature. Some seed was buried too deep in the planting process and other seed was lost by things beyond human control, such as rain, insects, or burning heat. Despite it all, there was always a harvest, some more abundant than, our, <clears throat> than others, but always a harvest. The parable spoke of a sower who sowed indiscriminately. As the sower sowed, seed fell onto a path, on rocky ground, fell among thorns, or onto good soil. This was how Jesus conducted his itinerant ministry. As the sower of the word, he proclaimed the kingdom of heaven to everyone, everywhere. The soils Jesus referred to can represent various responses to his kingdom proclamation. The seeds which fell onto a path and were later exposed were eaten by birds. This could relate to those who do not understand the words of Jesus and did not receive their benefit. The words could never <laughs> sprout within them. Perhaps think Pharisees and Sadducees. The seeds sown on rocky ground without much soil sprang up quickly but failed to thrive because there was no depth of soil. Such soil could represent those who responded immediately to Jesus' call, but eventually fell away when persecution arose. The seed <clears throat> sown on thorny ground could represent such people as the rich young man who Jesus encouraged to give all he had and follow him, but was unable to nurture the word in his heart. His loyalties ultimately lay in his wealth and worldly goods. The seed sown on good soil could represent those who heard the word and understood it and used it to bear fruit for the kingdom. Those harvests may have varied in size, but not in importance. Now, as in Jesus' day, 
the good news of love, redemption, and salvation face the daily challenge of acceptance. Those who cast the seed of good news do so with no guarantee that they will be heard or that their works will be fruitful. There is nothing wrong with the message, God loves you, but no one is responsible for another's response. Jesus certainly understood that when he came up against opposition in his hometown of Nazareth. There he was met with a threat of violence. We can give a gift. That does not mean the recipient will accept it. How many of us have been approached by well-intended missionaries from other denominations or faiths who think they carry the truth about God, the only truth about God, or the non-believers who think a blank slate is best? It can be easy to resist their version of the good news or no news. We usually feel that they are very misguided. They usually feel we are. Hopefully we try to find some common ground. Perhaps in the two commandments Jesus felt captured all ten. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. If we never read the entire Bible and these <clears throat> two things Jesus said were the only things we can remember, we have captured the essence of what Jesus would have us do. Why are so many resistant to the good news in general? Perhaps some embrace it at first, only to toss it away when times get tough because solutions do not come quickly. Some allow wealth and material possessions to rule their lives. Perhaps some think they can manufacture a theology or way of life that will support their opinions and desires. Some may think that God does not love them or is not listening when times are tough and they fail to avail themselves of God's comfort and strength. When their imagined control of a situation has faded, perhaps they feel less confident or important. Living in a time of modern science and discovery may lead some to rel <clears throat> relinquish the spiritual because it is not logical, failing to see that God can be perfectly log <clears throat> logical as well as spiritual. Our society emphasizes the individual, so it can be challenging to accept a role that only has the greater good in mind. And when things are going well in our lives, it is easier to <clears throat> believe that we are solely responsible for our inner strength and resilience. I have been at All Saints for seven years, and I would like to say that during this time, the congregation has cast an amazing amount of seed onto good soil, and it has flourished. The church determined that it was not going to be a church defined by tragedy, fire, debris flow, or COVID-19, but a church defined by the power of the Holy Spirit. God asked us to grow in heart and ministry, and we did. We listened to God and opened our doors to an inspired rector with vision and courage who radiated the love of Christ. New faces and families, refreshed hearts and minds of those already here, increased lay ministry and music ministry, increased Christian education for adults, families, and children, deeper ties with our preschool, closer relationships among parishioners, staff who considers themselves family, an outstanding capital campaign and subsequent building <laughs> preservation of All Saints so that the church could serve its members and the wider community who seek the love of Christ. All can be proud of the harvest of the seeds that have been sown. As individuals, <clears throat> what we do each day affects God's harvest. We do it in thought, word, and deed by those things which we have done and by those things which we have not done. When we have not listened with our whole heart, we have not loved God 
with our whole heart. When we have not loved our neighbor, we have not loved God, but only ourselves. I pray that we continue to be mindful of the seeds that God would have us cast, and that we treat the soil only as good soil, for God alone knows what it will produce. Trust what God can harvest through your efforts. Amen. Joining with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today, let us affirm, affirm our faith of the Church, saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People With Solomon and the great sages of our lineage, let us now turn our hearts to God and seek true wisdom, saying, <clears throat> O God, hear our prayer. For the leaders of religious communities and parishes throughout the earth, as they journey towards truth and clarity, we pray for God's wisdom. O oh God, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Timothy, Barbara, Catherine, the Thomas family, Nancy, Deanna, George, Lee and Roy, Betty, Judy and Dick, Christina, Terry, Joanna, Alex and the Dayan family, Diane, Sandra, Jill, Jerry, Andrew and the Haslam family, Cynthia, Peggy, Alan and the Morgan family, Blake and Sandy, Steve, Martin, Fred, John, Vicki, Carolyn and the Henderson family, and Debbie. For the dying victims of incurable disease, for those chained by depression, fear, and addiction, and for those who minister to them, for those on our minds and in our hearts. We pray for God's wisdom. O oh God, hear our prayer. For the youth of our age, in their search for the pearl of identity, we ask for God's wisdom. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all mothers and fathers who awake today without food for their children, we ask for God's wisdom. O oh God, hear our prayer. For those who seek and never find, for those who travel without purpose, and for those blind to the needs of others, we ask for God's wisdom. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, 
for those who are homeschooling, those who fear the present and the future. We pray for physicians, nurses and home health aides, medical researchers, teachers, those who keep food on our tables, and all those working on the front lines for the common good. Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. We ask for God's wisdom. O oh God, hear our prayer. Astonish us once again, O oh God, and bring forth from the storeroom of your heart the abundance of wisdom. May all who ask for our prayers know your love, and may we give testimony to your grace in our lives of compassion. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing our will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My friends, while we are not able to receive Holy Communion at this time, we can celebrate a spiritual communion. Indeed, we are always in communion with one another and with God uh, all of the time. So I invite us to do a spiritual communion together. It's a devotion that anyone can use at any time when they desire to receive the Holy Eucharist, but because of circumstances are separated from the sacrament. Let us pray together. O Lamb of God, in union with the faithful gathered throughout your church, and remembering particularly your own church community, our hearts long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory and particularly the blessings given in me. Let us continue together. Blessed, Blessed Savior, Savior, I love you above all things, and I earnestly desire to receive you into my soul. And although I cannot receive you in bread and wine, I remember and trust your words. This is my body, this is my blood, given for you. I invite you into my heart spiritually, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, kingdom come, thy will be, thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, day our bread, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, and lead us not, not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the, the kingdom, kingdom and, the power, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We love you all. Let us pray together. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus and, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom and guide us in right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness. In the power of your gracious might, 
overcome every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, and keep us strong in faith, hope, and love until we meet at your table again, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet by which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands by which he blesses all the world. May God, creator, Christ, and spirit, Bless you to be Christ's body in the world this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. My friends, I invite you to join in the closing hymn together. Tis his, 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 tis his